So, last week, let me tell you a little bit about our guest speaker. And I think the first line, what you need to know about him first and foremost is, it, is how he arrived here today. And I'm not talking about transportation. I thought we had a guest speaker lined up a few weeks ago, but their schedule found them in California, so I assumed we would just go without one for this year's breakfast. Last Thursday, John Truhan, my friend, who's the coach at Red Bank, the girls coach at Red Bank, called me. He had just found out we weren't gonna have a guest speaker. He asked someone and they said, oh, we don't have one this year. But he, JT gave me a call, said, do you know who Tim Capstra is? And he said, of course I know who he is. He said, well, I just got off the phone with him, and if you want, I'll ask him and see if he can be your guest speaker. And my first reaction to JT was, can't do that to the guy. It's like it's Wednesday. The breakfast is Monday. How embarrassing! I, I I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't put him in that spot. Your friend JT said, "Don't worry, I will." <laughs> so, sure enough, and you know JT Tech could call me back. Said, "Here's his number. Get in touch with him." We exchanged some emails and texts, and um, and that's why he is here today. For those who don't know, our special guest is is in his eighth season as the Brooklyn Nets radio color, color analyst teaming up with play-by-play -play partner Chris Carino to form a terrific duo on WOBF, the WFAN. We didn't have WOBF. By the way, the Nets have won five in a row. New York Post media columnist Bill Mushnick, who I've known for 40 years, who can be really tough, has frequently praised the two, the two saying they give listeners the five C's, clear, concise, candid, and Carino and Castro. I quote, a good, honest, steady call for those who prefer fluency in plain basketball English. What a pleasure. They were so good that during a commercial I started my car to ensure they hadn't killed the battery. Mushnick said the sign of a good radio call is when you are in no hurry to leave the car to watch the game on TV. Tim also serves as NBA TV's lead analyst for the EuroLeague and several other international championships, the M NBA Summer League in Las Vegas as well as other broadcasting assignments, does a little work with a uh, broadcasting school with his partner. Uh, previous to this, he was the head basketball coach at Wagner from 1989 to 1990. And before that, an interesting dynamic, coach was the head baseball coach. So in the days of specialization, did both. Uh, there is somewhat of a connection here. You see, I did a little research, found out Tim's got a daughter by the name of Kylie, who is a highly regarded freshman at West Orange, and in her varsity debut Friday night, scored 11 points and grabbed 19 rebounds as the number 11 ranked team in the state beat East Orange. Now they won the uh, Section 1 Group 4 Championship last year. I think you're just here to scout. <laughs> because you may be coming to the RWJ Barnabas Health Arena sometime in March to play one of these teams. But I can't tell you how appreciative I am. The broadcast voice of the Brooklyn Nets, please welcome Tim Capstra. Kevin can talk, huh? Wow. <laughs> right? I'm sure they'd love to have you, you know, talk to the teams before the games, but uh, they're not good enough to miss the first half. You know? <laughs> a little delay, I'll give you a little, the young kids a little time. <laughs> I thought I could see my notes, I can't. Yeah, you're right. I was going to say that because uh, as I look here, I, I have an incredible respect. Uh, and it was really kind of an honor to be asked. I drive here from West Orange, New Jersey to uh, the Jersey Shore um, maybe 75, 100 times a, 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 because this is the best. You know, you, you, for your kid, your daughter, you want the best, you know? You, and so you drive and you do it. and. Uh, you know, so they can meet people like uh, Jenna and Brielle and Chloe and Dakota and people like that. And uh, they get the, it, so this was really an honor for me, a really big honor. And, and I have such respect for, um, first of all, coaches, coaches, high school coaches. Because if you ask college coaches, they'll say the best high school coaches in the country are high, uh, are, are high school coaches. They'll also say that a lot, sometimes the worst coaches are high school coaches. But the dedicated coaches that coach in high school, that are willing to coach through a holiday so you can be better, 
got to be at the top of that list. Got to be at the top of that list. And that's what that's what hot college coaches always say. Because you get different players every year. And, and I can just say on a personal statement, I was at, I watched uh, JT Truon coach one day. And he, he's asking me why I'm videoing. I said, well, honestly, that's the best best drills I've seen in a long time, and I make it a big hobby to go to practices. So the best are here, they're dedicated, and I hope that, and Kevin, the job you do with this is unbelievable. It, 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 it is unbelievable, and this is a great opportunity because for a coach, it's really difficult to know what to do during the holidays. You don't really know what to do. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's, it's before Christmas, so you kind of don't know what to do and you don't want to tick off any parents that might want to go somewhere or something like that. And now you're providing an opportunity. And this is why you say, well, why does the shore, I, I look at the top teams, and why does the shore dominate? I, and I really follow the girls' side. Uh, they, like, you look top 20, top 10. It'll be like eight shore teams. I, I have no doubt that the teams that are here will benefit from this being able to play through that. So that, that, that type of stuff and, and having this opportunity is, is just fantastic. And thank you. And Nick, given, given to this thing, thank you, man. That, that is unbelievable. The people that do stuff um, in the community are, are, are just amazing. I, I, um, on the boys' side, I, I don't know everybody. I do have, uh, basically my nephew is, a, 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 I know Jackson is here. And I, and I know a hard work, uh, hard work. Eric Carter, I don't know if anybody have followed his career recently. He's one of these incredible workers. He's an incredible worker, and, and I'm, not, I'm not kidding you, there's pro scouts at every game now. That's how good he's got. So if you're dreaming and you're pretty good, it's not impossible. Because if you had told me that when he was a sophomore in high school, I'd say no way. Maybe go to college. So there's dreams out there uh, available for you. I... Um, I, I love sports, and I love sports because it's, it teaches you so much, and it's been so good to me. I grew up in a small town in upstate New York, so I was a big deal. You know what I mean? I was a big deal. But sports are so awesome because it, it, it humbles you. You know what I mean? I was a big deal. In Utica, New York, you know, you think you're, you're a big deal. You know, I went to college. I went to Wagner College where I coached. Guess how many points I am short of a 1,000? 980. <laughs> I did play baseball though. I did play baseball. My nickname was Home Run Capstra. It, it, it wasn't that great, I was a pitcher. <laughs> I'll give you time. I was, I was fortunate because I got into coaching. I got into coaching and I, and I was lucky. I coached at Siena and I coached back at Wagner. We're pretty good. And again, it's humbling, right? My first couple of years, I built up the program. I thought it was pretty cool. I, I, I remember being, being on the cover of this Eastern basketball. I don't know if it's still around, but Eastern, I was on the cover of it. I thought it was really cool. And my... Uh, <laughs> it's so humbling. And my assistant coach says, hey, you know, and I had maybe a couple articles here or there. And they said, uh, hey, Sports Illustrated's on the line. Sports <laughs> Illustrated. So, you know, I had a couple of people had talked to me, you know, but, you know, I didn't, this is a big deal. So I go to grab the phone and I grab it and they go, for 75 cents an issue, you're going <laughs> to. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But then I didn't work so hard. I coached well for a while and then I stopped working hard. That's my biggest lesson to you, is to work hard. Again, the kids on a ride home, you know, learn what an issue is. That's a, that's a magnitude. The, uh, and then I, I didn't work so hard. And that's the biggest lesson I can give you. I, I, I turned the program around and then I hung out a little bit. And I got lazy and I wasn't as lucky and I didn't get as many, luck, as many recruits. But I kept coaching. And I was coaching, and this really happened. I was coaching up at Marist, and as it's, it's maybe some of the gentlemen are familiar. There's a referee that was a Hall of, like, Hall of Fame referee named Edgar Cartado, and 
He's ref in the game, and I'm at Maris, and I'm trying to fire up my team, so I, I got one technical. I got one technical. And there's like there's a pretty lot of people there for its lower level basketball, but they're throwing it felt like like pro wrestling. They're like throwing stuff at me. Not throwing, but yelling at me. And so I thought I'd really motivate the team by being thrown out of the game. Wow. I was all oh, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna get two technicals. They're gonna throw me. This is so embarrassing. So, and so I'm going out at the, at, at, the, at, the, at the official, and I charge onto the court, and the, this is, he goes, he goes, Timmy, he goes, if I got to watch your team, so do you, sit down. <laughs> is that embarrassing? <laughs> no, man, he wouldn't throw me out. <laughs> But I got him back. I got him back. I, I called timeout. Told everybody to play on box and one. But I, I told uh, this guy Billy Crisco, I said, I want you to guard him up and down the floor. Guard the official up and down the floor. <laughs> so he stopped the game. He goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I was at a clinic this summer, and they told me to put my best defender on the guy who was hurting me the most. <laughs> I don't know if I could tell jokes here today. I get to work. I, get, I wasn't a good enough coach. I, was a, I got good in the beginning because I was a good recruiter. I wasn't a good enough coach. That's why I have some incredible respect when I go to like JT's or different people's practice. There is a coach from uh, Lacey that coaches at, um, at, at, at the Brooklyn Nets named um, Chris Fleming. And, and I know he played in this tournament. I don't, I, I, I keep a little bit of space, so I don't know everybody that well. Uh, he'll be an NBA head coach. He's already won big things with the German national team. He was a great player at Richmond. Uh, as classy an individual as, as you'll ever find. Uh, hopefully I get him to speak here. Wonder if it works out. That might be. One. I'm trying to figure out who I replaced. What was that like? Nine on the list. Right. You were Christine Rampone. You tried. Yeah. Chris Fleming. Yeah. Chris. Chris Christie. You didn't have enough food. Didn't have enough food. It's going better than I thought. Seriously, I didn't know what to do. You kids get it. All right. Let me tell you about the NBA. The NBA. You think they show up and play. You think that they just end up being there, right? And they're naturally more gifted. There's a, there's, there's just like one out of... You know, like all the kids in your high school want to make your team and not everybody makes the team. And then you get to college. It is the deciding factor to be a pro is not ability total. There'd be, there'd be a ton more guys there. They are the most hard, they are the hardest working people. That's the reason why they made it. You would not believe what an NBA day in, entails. When the Brooklyn Nets players show up, they know exactly how long they slept. They know exactly, they test it for their entire hydration every day. They do a fitness routine of practice at 11, they, they get there at 8, they leave at about 6. It is, it is individual skills, it is fitness, it is stretching, it is performance team, it is film work. It is unbelievable what a day is. And you wouldn't believe what the summer is. They just work. There's a reason why guys make it. And if you think the NBA is about, oh, they cool out, and, they, you know, and, and, and they're just hanging out, and they can hang out, those days are long gone. The world has changed in the last 30 years, that's for sure. How you, how you treat your body, how you rest, how you interact daily, and what you do as far as stretching and fitness it is incredibly important. And if you're thinking you're good now, you can make yourself so much better. The Nets are worth you watching because they're just a bunch of guys that get better every day. They're not good yet, but they're better and they're fun to watch. How does that relate to you? I, I think it relates to you because you, you got responsibilities too. 
You are, you are, you are role models. You don't think you are, because you just made the team. Well, you made the team, but let's be honest. Maybe, maybe 30 kids tried out, 100 wanted to try out. They just knew they weren't good enough. They knew a long time ago they weren't good enough. So you're kind of special. So I, you should expect things from yourself as far as uh, academics, as far as rest, as far as eating properly. Act like a pro. Act like a pro. And, 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 and be a good, you know, you hear this all the time in the NBA, he's a good teammate. Be a good teammate. What does that mean? Well, the best players don't act like you're the best all the time. And if you're that good, you can make great, good players are, make themselves good. Great players make everybody else on the floor good. Be a great teammate. If you're on the bench, be into the game. Be positive. You gotta act a little bit. I'll name drop right now. Because Jay Wright once told my guy I work with, Chris Carino, best, some of the best advice he ever got was from me 20 years ago. He said, sometimes you gotta be an actor. Sometimes you gotta be an actor. And I'm telling you this season, your heart will break at times. If you're any, if you had my, your heart will break that you might not get the same amount of playing time you might not get or somebody else might be playing in front of you or the game isn't going the right way or you're not getting the ball. How are you going to act under those, uh, those situations? I, I think that is what determines what a great teammate is. You are role models. You are role models. You go to the games, there are, you're role models to some of the other kids in your school. They won't admit it, but you are. And there'll be young people uh, coming to your games and watching you. I run basketball camps in the summer. They're for young kids. And I tell you what, you are a big deal. This tournament is a big deal. You are a big deal. And for some of you, uh, you know, maybe some of you are going to go out and play. But I tell you what, it might not ever be a bigger deal than what's coming up in this tournament and what could come up, you know, as the season goes on. I remember as a young uh, person, I, I was a lot just like you. I, I can't remember where I heard it, what camp I was at, but there was a poem I kind of put on my wall. I'll give you a part of it, and then I'll leave you with this, okay? But again, th you have to understand that people are looking at you the whole time. You're looking at you. To, I got hired at Wagner as the basketball coach, and I scored 20 career points. I was on a job interview every day on campus. for four. That's what I said on my interview. I interviewed for five, four years here. I, 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 would, I interviewed for four years. You saw the way I do things, did this, did that, did that. Oh, I was hired at 28 years old. So, uh, you know, it, you are always being watched. And the lessons you are getting this in, through sports are amazing. And they make you so much better. And it gives you such an enormous advance. And it keeps you humble. But there are, there are people, uh, it, little kids watching you all the time. Um, here's about role models and these little kids I think about or just anybody there are little eyes upon you and they're watching you night and day there are little ears that quickly take in every word you say there are little hands all eager to everything you do and a little girl and boy who's dreaming to be like you you are setting an example every day in all you do for that little girl and boy who's waiting to grow up to be just like you. You guys have a great year. Thanks you for having me down.